Hello dear friends of Philip von Rosen Gallery. It has taken a while to get back to this channel since my last video and the analysis of Markus Huemer's painting that he had dedicated to his dealer supposedly at Art Basel. Mainly because I urgently needed a haircut and it took me a while to get an appointment with my coiffeur. Anyway, today I will talk about a group of four works by Rebecca and Tess that were part of my last exhibition with her. They are photographs and you see them behind me, from the template selection series, which show facades of skyscrapers. Rebecca Antes was born in 1980 in southwestern Germany and grew up there. She began her studies at the University of the Arts in Berlin, in the class of Bernd Kobeling, a painter of the so-called Neue Wilde, who had great visibility in Germany in the 1980s. She then continued her studies at the Stedel School in Frankfurt in the classes of Judith Hopf and Willem de Roy, and she graduated in 2009 with a large installation that was part of a trilogy that explored gender issues and the history of film and television using installation means and video film. In 2016, she exhibited the show Alpha Plus Plus in my gallery with photographs and videos which have been taken on extensive travels, especially in the Middle and Far East, as well as in the USA and Europe. The title of this exhibition refers to the highest possible rating of a so-called world city in the global competition of metropolises, in terms of its economic power. The works of the template selection series show a high degree of abstraction. It is usually not possible to tell from the pictures where exactly they were shot. Rather, Tess zoomed in so close to the facades with her camera that their structure in particular became visible. The precise understanding of top and bottom or left and right and thus the perception of the architectural construction and the respective spatial urban context was made impossible. The interplay of light, form, color and material which Tess composes like a painter is dominant. And this is where her artistic origins as a student of the University of the Arts in Berlin come into play. The mirroring glass facades basically become a body of reflection of themselves. And finally, they leave us wondering about their function of representing wealth, power and influence and vice versa. Thus, also about the exclusion of those who do not have access to this power and the wealth associated with it. The pictures and their series title also make us think about the mechanisms that lead to this exclusion. Size, height, building materials all contribute to keeping a distance respectively out the unwanted. The group of four works from the series shown here can be shown in this formation but does not have to be shown as such. Each of it is a single independent artwork. The buildings are located in Chicago, Seoul, again Chicago, and Kowloon, Hong Kong. Naturally, nowadays, I tend to, and I tend to say, these are digitally created images, and it is just as natural that Tess has worked on them by employing minimal digital manipulations. At the same time, it can be said that the biggest change can be seen in obscuring what we see working against the readability. For example, Tess simply rotated the image of the facade of the so-called 235 Van Buren residential tower in Chicago by 90 degrees. The balconies that in real life emerge horizontally from the facade become vertical elements that structure the image. And the American flag, which a resident has hung from a balcony above him, stands upside down in Tess's picture, a state which is actually even illegal unless you are, according to the law, in dire distress in instances of extreme danger to life or property and need to signal the state of being. But this is rather not to be assumed with the residents of such residential towers. In front of the building from Seoul, which is part of the so-called digital media city complex, there seems to be a reflecting surface that reproduces the sky and its clouds as an image. At the same time, it seems as if the facade had a large rectangular hole and the glass elements of the facade itself also reflect the cloudy sky. 
In any case, it never becomes quite clear how exactly the reflecting surface and the facade relate to each other and what, is, what this reflecting surface actually is or could be. Even more obscure is the picture that was taken at Ludwig Mies van der Rohe's Federal Center in Chicago. We think we are looking up, but what we see there is not clear. The picture is dominated by, di by diagonal lines running through the image in a tightly staggered fashion, like a blind. Obviously, at right angles to them are the supporting beams, and behind this technoid veil, a facade becomes visible, which in turn is horizontally structured. But all these explanatory moments do not allow us to really recognize where we are. The picture taken in Kowloon, Hong Kong, can be deciphered even less. This has to do with the fact that, this, that it is obviously a picture of a reflecting facade, which consists of several diagonal and intersecting glass panes. If you take the trouble to search the internet for the, in mirror writing, readable lettering, which characteristically is alchemy, and the indication Kowloon, Hong Kong, then you can identify the house that is reflected in the photographed facade. And then you know that alchemy is a company that strives to beautify man and woman, and that the picture has been rotated, again, by 90 degrees. You can also see that there are screens installed under the alchemy lettering, which probably show moving images 24 on 7. And finally, you can find the facade that reflects all this, a Burberry shop across the street. But without this aid, the image remains basically unreadable. The lack of legibility or the impossibility of deciphering the pictures, I would like to repeat here once again, makes them basically photographic paintings. The images were printed on a lightly grained photographic paper using pigmented inkjet printing. This in turn underlines the object-like character of the pictures, which do not have a mirror-smooth surface, but become visible as pictorial objects. The steel frames that Tess has opted for also correlate with this. From this impetus, it is logical that the photographs are not framed under glass. The works in the template selection series can be seen equally as critical analytical representations of real estate, which has an excluding effect and makes it clear to all of us whether we are part of the economic power or not. But instead of being merely repulsive as a sign of the superiority of a global turbo-capitalism, the photographs play with the allure of success, glamour, power, dominance and hierarchy on the one hand, and the horror and humiliation with which these characteristics are associated on the other hand. Moreover, if I may allow myself this personal assessment, the pictures are wonderfully composed and therefore become highly aesthetic works themselves, which plunge us even further into this dichotomy between pleasure and being appelled. I will conclude by mentioning two more practical aspects. First, Tess has decided for a total of five copies for the photographs in the template selection series. Copies 1 to 3 of this edition measure approximately 60 to 40 cm, and you have seen uh, these works uh, during this video. Copies 4 and 5 of the edition of 5 measure just under 120 by 80 cm. And the second practical aspect is, on June 26, 2020, I will open my fifth exhibition with Rebecca and Tess. Again, it will be about the real estate theme in the broadest sense, and again, it will mainly be photographs that we are showing. But while in the exhibition, Alpha++, plus plus, abstraction and thus, despite the applied zoom, a form of distanced examination predominated, in the new exhibition it is rather documentary, narrative and thus directly readable images, in which there was a relatively much greater distance between the motive and the camera. I hope that you will come to the exhibition from June 26 through August 29, or, should that not be possible, that you will look at the documentation of the exhibition. Thank you very much, bye bye and stay tuned.